are heading to uh, Jules Verne's house here in Amiens. Jules Verne and his wife Honorine moved into this house on the corner of Rue Charles de Bois and Boulevard Longueville in 1882 and lived here until 1900. He was 54 and at the height of his fame, the large two-story house has a big attic and a tower topped by a Belvedere. The kitchen, the stables and outbuildings take up the large left wing of the building, which is now the reception area. Similar to other houses of the period, the house with the tower is built from red brick with a pink coating on the front of the building and light colored painting at the back. The lintels, cornices, and window sills are made from limestone. The large garden attached to the yard disappeared in the 1970s, while the spiral staircase inside the tower led to the bedrooms on the first floor. The writer's study was on the second floor at the corner of the building. Now we will first explore the ground floor. It has retained much of its original decoration. It is the part of the house which has changed the least since Jules Verne left. The Winter Garden The main entrance to the house during Jules Verne's time. It has a bright space with a large glass roof opening into the tower. The Chinese plates and pottery on the walls are typical of the 18th century taste of exoticism. The dining room. This is the only room in the house to retain its original neo-gothic furniture and a coffered ceiling. When the Verns lived here, the entrance hall room was between the kitchen and the dining room. The kitchen. It is where the reception desk is now. There was a small dining room for everyday use. The ceremonial dining room suite has been reconstructed in the style of the period. In the cupboards, you will see some of Verne's belongings that belong to the family or Pierre Jules Hetzel, Verne's publisher. The drawing or music room. Displayed on the walls of this room are two large portraits of Jules Verne and his wife Honorine, who would regularly organize evening parties for friends here. On the either side of the mantelpiece, photographs of the Verne family are displayed, among them Pierre Verne, Jules' father, and Sophie Alotzi de la Fouille, his mother. Pierre and Sophie Verne had five children, two boys, Jules and Paul, in 1828 and 29, then eight years later, three girls, Anna, Mathilde, and Marie, in 1837, 39, and 42. Marie's portrait can be seen in the room. The Sitting or Smoking Room on display in this room is a collection of photographs of the Byrne family. Among them, Jules and Honorine Byrne.
You may also see Jules Verne's qualifications which are displayed in the showcases. Jules Verne's Early Literary Career This room is dedicated to Jules Verne's first place, early written work such as song lyrics and short stories published in Le Musée des Families Journal and novels inspired by Robinson Crusoe. Here you may also learn about his travels, particularly his crossings on board the Great Eastern, the biggest liner of the time. With his brother Paul, they traveled to the United States in March 1867 where he visited New York and Niagara Falls. This trip would inspire him to write his novel, A Floating City. Then let's go up the spiral staircase to the first floor. On this floor are the Verne family bedrooms. There is now a reconstruction of Hetzel's publishing company in Paris, his sitting room and his study. Born in Chartres in 1814, Pierre Jules Hetzel became a publisher in 1836. As a proud Republican, he worked with Lamartine during the 1848 revolution. Forced into exile after the coup d'etat on December 2, 1851, he settled in Brussels where he continued to work as a publisher. There he struck up a friendship with Victor Hugo. After the 1859 Act of Amnesty, he returned to Paris to open his company on 18 Rue Jacob. He gave priority to publishing books for young people and started a journal in 1854 the Magazine d'Education et de Recreation in 1865. Hetzel's first texts were published in the Magazine d'Education before they were published in small paperbacks. However, the Extraordinary Voyages series is best known for the large Grand Octavo editions. In Grand Hardback covers, the Extraordinary Voyages has been published in more than 20 different covers and there is no other example of such lavishness in literature. The popularity of these editions is due to the tremendous success of Jules Verne's novels, as well as the attractiveness of the decoration chosen by Hetzel, which he changed according to public taste. Hetzel Study this space is devoted to the publisher and displays some of his belongings, including an armchair from his company's lounge and a filing cabinet with index cards from Hetzel's private library, kept up to date until the 1950s. A print on the left side of the room shows the original layout of Hetzel's study. Hetzel's Lounge Displayed in this large room is Hetzel's Lounge Suite, which includes two armchairs, unit chairs, a pedestal table, and a publisher sofa where George Sand, Jules Verne, Victor Hugo, and Alexander Dumas once sat. On the walls are pictures of the Hetzel family, Pierre Jules Hetzel, his wife Sophie, and their son Louis Jules Hetzel. The latter succeeded his father in 1886 but sold the company in 1914. Jules Verne's Life in Amiens The other part of the room is dedicated to Jules Verne's life in Amiens. Jules Verne settled here in 1871 in order to be closer to his wife's family. In 1873, he purchased a house on the Boulevard Longueville, which is now Jules Verne Boulevard which he left in 1882 to rent the house with a tower. However, in 1900, he returned to Boulevard Longueville where he died on the 24th of March 1905. He became involved in local life as early as 1872. He became a member of the local academy 
the Industrial Society, and the Horticulture Society to name a few. He was also a board member of the Savings Bank, but most importantly, he served as a city councillor for 16 years, from 1888 to 1904. In this role, he had to deliver speeches including upon the inauguration of the circus on the 24th of June, 1889. Now let's take the spiral staircase to the second floor. After a detour through Jules Verne's SeaWorld, you will discover his working space, from his sources of inspiration to his writing room. The original location and decoration of this study have been recently restored. Seafaring This is a replica of Jules Verne's boat, the St. Michel III. This reconstruction transports you into the cabin of a mid-19th century English yacht. There is a view of Le Croteau, where Jules Verne rented a summer house named La Lo Solitude. From 1865 to 69, he began to ride 20,000 leagues under the sea. Library On this floor, Jules Verne had a library which contained approximately 12,000 books, which he would refer to as he wrote his novels. He consulted many authors including Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, Sir Walter Scott, and Edgar Allan Poe. The Study in the smallest of all the rooms in the house, Jules Verne wrote his novels here. Between 5 and 11 in the morning, he created more than 30 books including Matthias Sandorf, Two Year Holiday, and The Castle of the Carpathians. The study was reconstructed exactly as it was in Jules Verne's time with an iron couch, a leather armchair, and a desk. The globe on the desk belonged to Jules Verne. Around the world in 80 days. An opportunity to walk through Jules Verne's sources of inspiration as well as across the map of the world on the floor. On this map, marked in black, is the route for an aerial tour of the world drawn by Jules Verne for his novel, Robur the Conqueror. The cross-out routes show the various changes made by the author. Written in 1872, Around the World in 80 Days is still the most translated French novel in the world. This story inspired numerous pieces of merchandise during the writer's time. On display are lotto sets, a snakes and ladders game, figurines, a set of dessert plates, collector's prints, and even some wallpaper inspired by the novel. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Jules Verne was inspired to create an underwater team by the 1867 World Fair in Paris, which honored the latest developments in submarines and diving suits. The idea of writing a novel came from George Sand after she read Jules Verne's early novels. Jules Verne wrote about his novel that his readers are his passengers, and it is his duty to make sure they are well treated during their crossing and fully satisfied when they return. After that, climb the spiral staircase up to the exhibition of the 20,000 leagues under the sea. Then to his attic. It is a place to store many memories. It is a safe haven for things, a family attic with trunks full of souvenirs, old photographs, discarded game sets, magic lanterns, posters, and other treasures. Here, Jules Verne's attic is also home to many lives of his novels from their creation to the present day. Film posters, a real clapboard, puppet theaters, models, everything here bring back memories. Jules Verne and the Theater 
The theater was one of Jules Verne's passions for a number of generations before the invention of the cinema, Le Chatelet and La Forte St. Martin's lavish productions and puppet shows have reflected Jules Verne's sense of adventure and imagination. In the main display are two American posters for dramatizations of the children of Captain Grant and Michael Strogoff which actually belong to Jules Verne. Jules Verne and the Cinema 35 novels and short stories by Jules Verne have been adapted into over 200 films from 1901 to 2006. Captain Nemo's Odyssey and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is the most popular with filmmakers, with 31 productions to date, far ahead of Around the World in 80 Days with 24 films and Michael Strogoff with 23. So guys, this brings to the end of our tour around Jules Verne's house from his everyday life and imagination. In order to exit, we have to go down the spiral staircase from the tower to the ground floor. To know more about him, check out the description below where you can find some links from his life to the place where he died. Until next time, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Bye! So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, come on guys, hit the bell! For notifications! And don't forget to share!